order to protect themselves, the government announced that Mushtaki was in good health and that he had gained weight. People felt bitter about his arrest and constantly demanded his release. Public meetings, processions, demonstrations, as well as Mushraki Day was on held on 20th July and August 6, 1951. Mushraki, while still in jail, sent two telegrams to Liaquat Ali Khan pointing out that Nehru was delaying the settlement of the Kashmir issue and wrongly accusing Pakistan for aggression. Mushraki appealed to Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan to straight away ask India to move its forces from Kashmir. He felt that if India failed to withdraw its forces, Pakistan would need to launch a sudden and strong attack and seize Kashmir. According to him, it was the best psychological moment to capture Kashmir and as the issue was still afresh and Liaquat Ali Khan could mobilize world opinion in Pakistan's favor. As time went, Mushriki's health became so bad that he felt that he was going to die. On 18 August 1951, he sent his will to the bank. Four days later, on August 22nd, a senior officer of the jail said, in case of your death, probably even your dead body should not be handed and over and over you will be buried here. Regardless of his failing health, Mushriki offered his unconditional service to the Liaquat Ali Khan in a curing Kashmir. Mushriki recognized that if the matter was delayed, Kashmir could be lost forever. Unfortunately, Mushriki was unable to resolve the issue with Liaquat Ali Khan. On 1st October 1951, in order to justify Mushriki's detainment, the government declared Mushriki to be an enemy of Pakistan. On 16 October 1951, Liaquat Ali Khan was murdered. It was suspected that the Khaksas committed the murder under Mushriki's command, but during that time, Mushriki was still in detention. Any inquiry linked to the incident proved that any suggestion that the Kaskas were concerned in a conspiracy to the murder the Prime Minister or to inspire said Akbar to do so can be definitely discounted. Even with the government's failure to connect Mashriki to Liaquat Ali Khan's murder or any other crime, Mushriki remained in prison. On 20th October 1951, Mushriki wrote to the newly appointed Prime Minister Khawaja Nazimuddin. In the letter, he enlightened Nazimuddin that as a gesture of goodwill towards the new government, Mushriki will abandon his fast. Even though Mushriki showed a gesture of goodwill, the new government didn't reciprocate Mushriki's gesture and kept him in jail. So it was decided that a habeas corpus peti petition was submitted. However, the government prevented Mushriki from completing the paperwork. In addition, to preventing Mushriki from filing a habeas corpus peti petition, the government again extended his imprisonment for another six months on 28 December 1951. On 4th January 1952, a meeting of some prominent people was held in Karachi. The people at the meeting commanded Mushriki's release and issued a statement 
containing the signatures of many prominent figures, including GM Said, who is a political leader, a Kaksa, a one time and Minister of Education of Sindh in 1940, Ibrahim Jalis, and Pir Ilahi Baksh, who is an ex minister, who is an ex minister in the province of Sindh cabinet, and Salar Ayala. In, instead of listening to the demand for his release, the Punjab government extended Mashraki's detention for another six months. But people were determined on putting pressure on the Punjab government. Therefore, another Mashraki day was observed and protests continued in various cities of the country. To push for Mashraki's release, a deputation of the Islam League men Khawaja Nazamuddin and Mia Mumtaz Muhammad Khan Doltana finally on 31st March 1952, after his, de after his detention had been extended twice, a habeas corp corpus petition for Lama Mashriqi came up for hearing in the court of Muhammad Munir, Chief Justice of the Lahore High Court, Mr. Hussein Shaheed Suharudri, Mahmoud Ali Kasuri, and Khawaja Abdul Rahim appeared at the hearing on Mashraki's behalf. But the Chief Justice rejected the Lama's petition on 30th May 1952. Nevertheless, the pressure on the government for Mashraki's release soon became too much to handle. A confidential report by the CID criminal investigation department described the alama was being no more a danger to public peace and tranquility mushriki was released from jail on 9th july 1952 and on 10th july 1952 he wrote a poem about his release in the face of brutalities he faced in jail and the opposition from the government, no one could stop Mashraki from working to achieve his goals. On August 20, 25th, 1952, Mashraki arrived in Karachi where Pir Ilahi Baksh, who is an ex-minister in the province of Sindh Cabinet, received him. Mashraki went to Saudi Arabia to perform Hajj. When he returned to Karachi on 22nd September 1952, he was given a warm welcome. Here he addressed a large public gathering. He talked about Kashmir and other issues confronting the nation. According to the Civil and, Mil and Military Gazette, he fervently appealed to all political parties to issue differences and strengthen the hands of the government as the country was passing through a critical juncture. On 25th July 1953, Nehru arrived in Karachi to talk about Kashmir and canal water issues with Prime Minister Muhammad Ali Bogra. Mashraki also wanted to talk about issues with Nehru. He sent a telegram to Nehru earlier to his arrival saying, We Muslims know that these are matters of life and death for us. But the government prevented Mashraki from meeting Nehru. On 25th and 26th November 1955, Mashraki appeared on two conferences on Kashmir in Karachi. The first conference on 25th November addressed by Lama Mashraki, Sardar Ibrahim and other leaders was held under the joint ausp auspices of the Jummu and Kashmir Muslim Conference and the Kashmir Committee. The second conference by the PM of Pakistan, Chaudhary Muhammad Ali, to address the conference. One day before the All Parties Conference on Kashmir, in Kashmir, the according to Pakistan Times, Alama Mashraki said the Kashmir problem was already well known to the people of Pakistan. In his opinion, it was not proper to say anything on the question before the conference was over. However, 
However, he said he would oppose from every stage and also in conference any idea that might delay the solution of the problem. He declared that if the conference tried to hoodwink the people on this issue, as the government of Pakistan has been doing for the last 80 years, he would expose, bef expose before the people and diso dissociate himself from it. But if it took any decision from expediting justice to the people of Kashmir, he would offer every sacrifice required from implementing the decision of the conference. At the conference, India's evasive tactics were condemned and it was decided that all efforts should be made to secure the right to self-determination for the people of Kashmir. In 1956, after a public meeting at Minto Park in Lahore, Mashraki made a prediction in regards to the future of Pakistan. This is a quote from his prediction. Ye Muslims, today from this platform, I sound you a warning. Listen carefully and ponder. Sometime in the future, probably in 1970, you will be confronted with a perilous situation. In 1970, I see it clearly. The nation will be stormed from all sides. The internal situation would have deteriorated gravely. A panic of widespread bloodshed will sweep the nation. The frenzy of racial and provincial prejudice will grip the whole country. Zindabad and Murdabad will define your ears. Plans will be initiated to dismember the country. Take it from me that in 1970, Pakistan will be plagued with the grave threat to its sovereignty. You might actually lose if the reins of the country were not in the hands of courageous and unrelenting leadership. India will, in that grave situation, try to take advantage of your internal turmoil and devour you or the governance of the country will fall in hands of spineless self-seekers or self-centered opportunists who might on their own accord push you to the Indian lap. I warn you about 1970. I warn you to emerge in that year. In 1947, you had a refuge to protect yourself, but in the coming days of 1970, I can clearly visualize you will have river atok on one side and the Chinese border on the other side and you will have no place to go. The outcome of the prediction made by Mashraki was proved to be true. When in 1971, East Pakistan separated from West Pakistan and became Bangladesh. Moving on, in 1957, all the political disagreements in regards to Kashmir were unsuccessful and the subject remained unsettled even after 10 years. Mashraki wrote a letter to Nehru in January 1957, according to the Pakistan Times. He argued that since India had no natural or vital links to Jammu and Kashmir, her handing over this land to the people of Pakistan would be for their personal good and prosperity and that such a step would relieve both countries of the financial loss which, when retrieved, 
could be utilized for the good of both the peoples. Though nothing came of this letter, Mushriki decided to arrange a peaceful march into India with one million volunteers and supporters in order to bring Kashmir issue to the world's attention and force Nehru, who claimed to be great human humanitarian, to settle the issue. This frightened and alarmed the Indian government and Nehru requested Pakistan government to restrict Mushriki and his Razakars. So the government of Pakistan suppressed Mushriki's efforts. The government instructed the deputy commission, uh, commissioner not to allow the Khaksas to set up their camps along the border for crossing over the Indian side. In the blink of an eye, Mushriki was arrested under the pretext of wrongfully confining police officials at Waga border and later also imposed section 144 this stipulated that no more than five people could gather at a public place. On March 10, 1958, Mushriki was arrested again. The reason for that is he was allegedly involved in the murder of Dr. Khan Sahib Chief, who was the minister of West Pakistan. He was later found innocent on 17 November 1958 when he left from prison. Mushriki was very sick and was suffering from cancer. Yet, in 1962, he was again arrested for conspiring to overthrow the government of President Ayub Khan. However, this was again a claim lacking evidence. Although Mashraki had spent many years in jail, a time came he could no longer be kept under detention. His health had severely worsened and on 27th August 1963 Mushriki had submitted to cancer pursuing him and passed away. Alama Mushriki was a man whose services to his nations were no less than those of Kaidiyazm, Gandhi or Nen or Nelson Mandela but alas the nation failed to realize this thank you so much guys for tuning in and listening to the great scholar great leader and a great politician who struggled and fought for his country and put every single blood sweat and tears for his country thank you so much for listening guys take care thank you for watching please like subscribe and share thank you everyone and thank you alama mashriki thank you